Some people have requested I do a video about the manual controls on the LG V10 and the G4 camera. So this is what this video is going to be about, and let's get right into it. In front of me I have the V10 set up on a tripod with the manual camera settings open. I'm going to go through each of the settings and provide some information about what they do, and how it ties into getting a nice photo. Before we begin though, I have one caveat. In order to take the best pictures possible on a smartphone with manual camera controls, you will need to get some sort of tripod, or at least have somewhere you can prop the phone in place. You'll see why I say this in a moment. The first thing we will start with will actually be the type of photo that is stored. Here you have a choice of JPEG or JPEG and RAW. JPEG is the more common extension for pictures, however RAW is different. It's also not exactly an image. There are a few programs that are able to read RAW files. Some of these include Lightroom and Photoshop. These are professional programs for photo editing. You can install Lightroom Mobile if you're already paying for it on Android, but the app Snapseed now also supports RAW files and is free. I don't want this video to be too long, so I won't get into it here. All you have to know is that a RAW file is a collection of everything that the camera sensor records. It's all saved in this file so you can change things such as white balance, exposure, bring out shadows, and turn down highlights. This is possible with JPEG, but your photos will degrade in quality after making edits compared to RAW files. Keep in mind though that RAW files take approximately 18 megabytes per file, while JPEGs take about 6 megabytes. Next, we have the white balance. In simple terms, changing white balance makes a photo either cooler or warmer. If you're taking a picture and the photo looks yellow, you might want to turn down the white balance to make it less so. If your picture looks blue, you can do the opposite. Next, we have manual focus. This is useful if you have a close-up shot. Typically, if you're taking a picture of a landscape, you should use autofocus. But for close-up, you might want to focus on something else. Here we have these two targets. If we mess with the manual focus, you can choose to either focus on the dog or the little goat. The next button is actually grayed out for the manual mode, it's exposure compensation, but since you can't use it in manual mode, I'm going to skip it. Now we have ISO. ISO is how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive, the lower the ISO, the less sensitive. As you can see here, I can raise it and the image gets much brighter, or lower it and the image gets darker. Now you might think to yourself, well, why don't we just max out the ISO when it's dark and then we can take excellent photos at night. While raising ISO makes your image brighter, it also introduces a lot of noise to the photo. Noise is the grain you typically see in smartphone shots when they're taken in low light. Finally, we have the shutter speed. The shutter speed is how long it takes for the sensor to collect light or how quickly the photo is taken. You can take a photo as quickly as 1 6,000th of a second or as slowly as 30 seconds for one photo. The faster the shutter speed, the less time the sensor has to collect light, which leads to a darker photo. Of course, the opposite is true. The longer it takes to take a photo, the more light the sensor is able to collect. The final button on the end resets the settings to auto where you can start messing around with them again. Basically if you made the settings really strange, just click the button and it will reset them and you can start again. Now that I've explained a bit about all of the settings, we can start to figure out what we can do to get the best photo depending on what we want. For example, if you're at a sporting event and want to get a sharp picture of a moving object, or maybe if you have children and you want to take a picture of them while they're running, you should increase the shutter speed so the camera takes the picture very quickly and captures the moving object without blur. Of course, this will require good lighting. If you don't have good lighting, you can still take a fast shutter photo, you would just have to increase the ISO. Keep in mind that this will decrease the quality of the photo because of a higher ISO, but the trade-off is being able to capture a moving target. If you don't have a moving target, however, and are able to take your time, that's where you will really be able to get a good looking photo. This is also where the tripod comes in. By reducing the ISO to the minimum of 50 and increasing the exposure time, you can get a really high quality picture even in very low light. Again, it is absolutely crucial that the phone does not move during the time of the photo being taken. If the phone is moved even a little, the photo will be ruined. Here are two pictures that were taken in these same exact lighting conditions. The dark image was shot with a shutter speed of 1 tenth of a second. In the other picture, I reduced the shutter speed to 30 seconds and reduced the ISO to 50. 
Again, the room was completely dark with only my screensaver on in the background on my monitor. Another cool property of using a long shutter speed is you get to capture movement. Now, what I mean by that is when the phone is taking a picture, it's essentially combining everything it senses into one photo. If you prop the phone on a tripod at night and set an exposure time of about 8 to 15 seconds while pointed at cars, all you will see is the light trails from headlights and taillights. Another trick is to set a long exposure shot in a dark room and wave around a flashlight. The end result will be a light show effect and if you are moving fast enough you won't even be visible in the picture. Using long exposure during the day is also possible, but you would need to use a neutral density filter which is essentially a very dark piece of glass that reduces the light coming into the camera sensor. This lets you use the cool effects and properties of long exposure while not blowing your entire picture with the immense amount of light during the day. I won't get into the neutral density filters in this video, but if anyone is interested I can cover it in a more detailed video soon. With that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope this was helpful information. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It does help out my channel a lot. Also, share this video if you think it will help someone you know. Also, subscribe for similar content. Have a great day!